G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today we're gonna to take a look at a channel called Manifestel. Uh, this particular clip is called The Rise of Pick Me Propaganda. So this is a pretty um, fanatical womanist. Uh, I haven't watched this whole video. I probably watched the first couple of minutes and thought it might be interesting um, for us guys to see what sort of stuff is being spouted, I guess on the other side of the fence, on the more fanaticized womanist front. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm sure I won't agree with any of it, uh, but let's just see what sort of poison someone like this can spew uh, to women. Ma'am, your husband hates you. When you believe <laughs> that men gatekeep commitment, you put yourself in auditioning energy. And that's the worst energy to be in as a woman. Like, how dare you? Okay, how dare you audition for a man? How dare you ask a man to pick you? Pick me, choose me, love me. How dare you disrespect yourself like that? Okay, like get up, okay? You are the literal prize. You literally are the gateway to the portal. Like you're not just the gatekeeper, you're the literal gate, okay? <laughs> hey, bestie. Welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group Podcast where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm All right, so I'll, I'll stop it there. So basically everything she said we know is wrong. Um, but I don't know how, if this is a grift or what, because it is pretty fanatical and, and the sort of stuff that she's saying is quite damaging. Um, I think especially with saying to women not to do anything for men, um, not to uh, be attractive for men um, in any way because that takes away their power. I, I can't understand the logic in that. Um, and these will be the women who listen to this sort of stuff and all these other dating coaches. Um, they end up alone while probably this girl's probably married or something in the background and is probably grifting them. She's got uh, 227,000 subscribers. This particular video has got 92,000 views. There's a quite a, a wide reach on this content. She does a lot of videos. This isn't the only one. If you guys like my take on what she's doing and you want to see more of my thoughts on her channel, I'm happy to do more. Um, but I do think this is going to be rather painful uh, to watch, like a lot of this content. Uh, but yeah, I'm taking one for the team once again, gents, as a girl correspondent. I'm your host, Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about how women gatekeep relationships, not men. And it has been the long running scam. Notification bell so you never miss a spoiled girly episode. With that being said, let's get into it. Women are often told that women gatekeep schmecks and men gatekeep commitment. And women often believe this bold and blatant and unfortunately very pervasive lie that <laughs> okay. men gatekeep everything. Like, no, women gatekeep everything. Nah. Women gatekeep their bodies, their wombs. They gatekeep the next generation. They gatekeep relations. They gatekeep the next generation. So where does, uh, where does the sperm come from? Um, I think there might be a man involved in that equation. It's a 50-50. Uh, even on the on the male side of the fence, where, where men say, "Oh, it's the seed that's the most important." No, you need a, you need a seed, uh, you need the egg. That's it. So uh, that's bullshit on both radical sides of the fence. I'll call it out. Uh, men can be just as stupid um, on their own channel, spouting rubbish like that. They gatekeep commitment. So women gatekeep so much of everything that men wanted to experience it <laughs> and gatekeep resources so that women wouldn't have a choice but be in proximity to men. Wow. Because if men didn't gatekeep resources and brainwash women into believing their lies, below bare minimum low effort men wouldn't have a chance in life. And before people say that like, oh, not all men. Yeah, obviously not all men. That's why there's a huge qualifier in the beginning. It's become a tongue twister. Below bare minimum low effort men. Okay, it's so annoying. Like, not all men. Annoying. Back to the topic, like when you believe... This is giving me vibes of like hardcore red pillar dudes, you know, who, who say all women will uh, destroy you. Um, you know, guys, I'm very balanced in my content. Uh, I look at both sides of the fence, both sides of an argument, critical thinking. So once people start saying all with anything, like everything is this or all people are that, you've instantly lost an argument with me because you've just disqualified yourself from having any critical thinking skills. It is crazy, though, when a lot of this stuff, which is like literally biological and social structures, which have been in place for thousands of years um, or hundreds of thousands of years, uh, women will say doesn't exist because they just don't feel like they want it to. And also, what's this? She's got a 
tablespoon with a little microphone attached. <laughs> but hang on, I want to see the. I want to have a look at the actual. Um, just the absolute ignorant comments she's making based on that she's covered in makeup. She's looking after herself. She has nice hair, so she's obviously doing that to be looked at by men. <laughs> this lie that women gatekeep schmacks and men gatekeep commitment you start thinking that men are the arbiters of your worth as a partner this belief that men gatekeep commitment is what turns women into pick -me's, okay it's the reason why women feel so down when a guy suddenly stops texting them or calling them after a few dates oh, sorry uh when uh, bryce or steve you stop texting or calling them after a few dates you think that you're not worthy of a relationship because some man rejected you because he didn't deem you worthy enough Brassy. of being in a relationship with because he's the gatekeeper of relationships. He didn't think you were worthy enough. Like, no. First of all, rejection is normal, okay? For every rejection you receive, you should be thankful because they are saving you so much heartache and so much resources and so much time that, that you would have... What resources do women put in apart from their time? We also have uh, a time element that we're putting in. So we're all sacrificing time. Men's time also matters. Wasted. If you kept on going with this relationship, rejecting you is honestly the biggest favor that they could do for you. And that's not to say though that rejection isn't painful because it is like rejection is painful, but rejection in the early dating stages is information. Okay. Now, you know, you're not meant to be with this person. Thank you, next. But it's one thing to be rejected outright, and it's one thing to be love-bombed, misled, and taken advantage of, and left feeling used and duped and conned, which is what's happening to a lot of women meeting men on dating apps. A lot of women meeting Bryce and Steve-O, Monster Hunters on the dating apps. Not 99 or 95% of the other men who would love to take them out, uh, be lovely to them. Right, there's bad actors on both sides, absolutely. I know what it's like to be a scumbag. I've been an absolute jerk before. But women go for guys like that. It's to their own detriment. They don't want to complain and say all men are like that. And that's just not true because most men don't have the capability to do that. And most men um, are probably have a little bit more honor and ethics than, yeah, the 10% of guys who just <laughs> cause a lot of damage, right? I've been one of them. I admit it. It's not great. But if they were a bit more open-minded and a bit more broader on the subset of men, um, the demographic of men in which they choose you today, they wouldn't have these issues. Uh, it's just plain and simple. In today's dating landscape, women are facing a rise of below bare middle effort men facilitated by the rise of dating apps and hookup culture. And we have discussed both dating apps and hookup culture in past classes, so check it out if you missed it. Anyway, as technology has made it easier to meet potential partners, many women find themselves confused and frustrated when men who initially show interest pursue them and then ghost them. Uh, Bryce and Steve, let's just, um, we need to have a, a replacement, automatic replacement of words. Okay, and like I said, it's okay if you get rejected, but there's this trend of men literally leading women on for such a long time and then just ghost them for no reason Steve okay. but there is a reason and we're going to get into it in a little bit here we okay. go the patriarchy and actually we're going to get into it right now let's, let's talk it. about it dating apps have lowered barriers to entry let's watch this video men don't want to earn our time and presence the way they expect us to earn theirs you're so right at the end of the day it's just laziness i've been thinking recently about how the barriers to entry when it comes to dating and romance have been lowered slash wrong 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 and once again it's like this more radicalized views uh on the world once again the barriers are higher than ever for men what what, what, what to say what because there's a dating app it's always women telling on themselves who say the same old thing oh it's so easy for guys to get you know action on the apps what they ever do is get action and disappear you're just telling on yourself that you're going for the kind of guys that will do that to you. 90% of guys aren't getting jack shit off the apps. If anything, it's frustrating. It's a higher barrier to entry because all the women are chasing one particular demographic of man, right? So these women are also in that age, uh, in that category, in that demographic, chasing that population of man, becoming incredibly frustrated and bitter. And I don't know if it's what would you even call it? Red pill chicks? I don't know. They go hardcore into the womanism, hardcore into hating all men. 
This chick here on the screen, she's probably been done over, the one with this channel. She's had a few chads or Bryce's that are just, you know, promised to the world, you know, and she's had the light snuffed out of her, and now she's become this intolerable, uh, insufferable, over-the-top womanist in response to a lot of pain and anguish, like a lot of guys will become... Um, full-on hardcore red pill dudes, uh, black pill guys, um, guys who swear off any sort of emotion for women. So it's the same thing. So it's interesting that it happens to women as well. But I think a lot of these women, they just take it further. It's a full gender war, right? Yeah, you do get guys in the space that uh, are full-on off women um, and say this and that about them. But really, these women are just are a lot more ruthless about it, especially singling out men as a whole population. Yeah, I find it really interesting. And um, this, this video is a bit different, guys. I'm not going to make fun of them. I'm just trying to understand and, and have a bit of a thought process here as to how you end up saying this stuff. And I think it truly is by letting yourself be used and abused off a dating app. As I say, any of these girls, the one on the screen, both of these girls on the screen, they would have guys who would love to go out with them, take them on, marry them. But they've made the mistake for going um, for the shiny apple on the tree, like Adam and Eve, right? They've, they take... <sighs> I just can't see that what they're doing is bad. It's a bad choice. It's a bad decision. So instead of changing the behavior, like some do, some some have, and I'll, and I'll admit to this, being a Brycey um, or a Steve-O at times, being an absolute scumbag, women have given me the ass because they've worked out that I'm just not going to give them what they want. And then you do see them. I'm like the good luck chuck. Uh, then they're with another guy. Um, they go, oh, hang on, uh, you know that guy. Not not dealing with him again. Um, I'm going to go and meet a normal dude and give him the time of day. And they end up with a uh, married and with a kid. Now whether it lasts or not, it's a different story. But they do. But the ones that end up like this are the ones that don't do that, and they say, I give up all, like completely give up, and all men bad and patriarchy and this that and the other. We, and they try and say, no, hang on, actually, we're the table. We control society. We control the birth of children. Um, we control the entry points to relationships, yada, yada, yada. So they, they spout rubbish. They, just say what, they say what men say, but then they just make it about women. So there's no real originality here. Literally obliterated as a result of dating apps and the pervasiveness of like hookup culture. And I have done like previous videos and podcast episodes about this, but just recently I've been talking to people that have been using dating apps. And then I've also been seeing a lot of screenshots on Chinese social media, particularly like Chinese girls that live overseas and date overseas men and use apps like Tinder and Bumble. And I'm seeing a lot of examples of messages where guys are like, hey, I've been thinking about us and I just don't think I'm ready for a relationship. <laughs> I'm not actually looking for anything serious. Been really great getting to know you. And girls just being like so confused that this guy is like, pursued them or they've become intimate with this guy and then he just like flips How, what's to be confused about right he, he wanted you for some sax and he's realized a lot of the time some guys we're very open-minded like if you he, generally as men we aim for getting the action first i'm not going to speak for every man but most men aims for that you got a one track mind once you get the action then you work out hey hang on do i actually like this chick once I've blown a load, I'm lying next to her in bed or in the bushes or wherever the hell you are, the back of the VN behind the cricket ground. You're lying there, you're sweating, you're having a when you blew together. Do you actually like hanging out with this chick? Do you actually want to stay there and talk to her? Or do you want to come up with an excuse to get her home, to get out of there? Obviously, they've fallen into the bucket of the guy uh, enjoyed getting a load off, uh, saw them as a flashlight, and didn't, didn't want to pursue it. They get confused about it. There's nothing to be confused about. The switch and it's like like that meme that's like i have had a really great time with you i think you're amazing but i'm gonna go find someone better and i think yeah. it's because the stakes are just so low when it comes to dating now because there was like this study that was done obviously this doesn't apply to everyone but like in heteronormative relationship Hetero dynamics women are the ones that gatekeep sex and yeah. men are the ones that gatekeep commitment and because dating apps make it so easy for men to have access to women and then to also pretend that they want something serious when they could just be talking out of their ass, you know, like it is so common for men to say that they want to take you seriously yep. up until the point that 
yep. they are able to sleep with you yep. and then they can change their mind and say, oh, sorry, yep. I realised. Realize. No, no, no. They didn't change their mind. Um, the whole way through, they've realised that uh, they know that you're just going to be put in the pump and dump category. We can work you out within 30 seconds. And I wanted to know, okay, is it going to be worth my effort to try and bag and tag this chick? Guys will say whatever they got to say. Guys, when I was Monster Honey, I would say whatever I had to say. I'd find the point. Um, you know, the pressure point, the thing that worked for me. Um, tell them, hey, they want a baby? I'll tell them I'll give them a baby. I'll say whatever you got to say to get in there and get some action. Because I was a guy that shouldn't have gone with in the first place. I would have been two or three points above him probably. And that's no 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 um no humble brag there, guys. What I'm saying is I'll go for women that were average at best. So then they get angry that they can't get me to commit or, or, or lock me down when all, all I was doing the whole time was just having a good time and cruising around and tasting all the different uh, colours of the flavours of the rainbow, I guess, going into Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. I could have all the flavours. I went into that shop. I was like a kid that's been locked in there overnight. I had everything I wanted. There was no way um, I was going to commit. So it isn't like they get tricked. They should be able to understand that now. Give If you're going out with guys that are hot, like really hot, and you're just an average chick, he's going to just use you as a toy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I feel bad for them because they don't learn, right? They don't learn. Some do, uh, and some jump off this dating app stuff pretty quick once they get a decent option. But some never get off, and they get mad and angry and start carrying on on TikTok. I'm not ready. Actually, guys, actually, before I keep going, I'm going to stop. going to get about halfway through. Guys, aiming for 10K subs, so if you're enjoying the channel, please subscribe. And the best way to support me is to watch a video through to the end and comment and engage with the guys and put your experiences, all that sort of jazz that every, every other YouTuber says, but it does help me out. All right, let's keep going. For something serious. Like, even though you're not guaranteed your relationship working out, if you meet someone in person, if a guy pursues you in person or approaches you in person, I feel like at least he's going to be more intentional yeah. and he's going to feel like he has something to lose or there is something for him to earn as a result of putting himself out there and approaching you in person. Most, Most guys don't have the options. that she's, she's, she's saying that all men have all these options. All men can go on the apps and just tear it up. Once again, it's a fallacy. I've had women say this to me. Oh, all men want on dating apps is SEX. All they do is just bang chicks. No, literally it's only a small section of guys who have worked out how to do it um, or, or meet the qualifications or they know how to sort of play the system with women. They do that. That's the majority of guys do not do that. So once again, I do find it very frustrating to watch this and they um, there's no self-accountability and no self-reflection. It's man lying, man bad. Yeah, Men, do you lie for that? Do you think if he said, oh, you know what, actually, let's be intentional. I'm going to tell you my intent is to sleep with you first and then work it out, which is how men generally operate. They're not going to, you're not going to get past that. You're going to say that. You're going to be blocked and deleted straight off the app. So you lie. You go along with it or you tell a white lie. Not so much blatant lie. Most of the people that I've dated, I've met in person first and then maybe we've like connected on social media. But I feel like because they have had to like know me before they've asked me out there is so much more weight put on that interaction and on the potential of that connection than if they had never seen me before in person and were just swiping through an app and met me that way like i don't think you're guaranteed your relationship working out just because you meet in person first but i feel like at least you might have a slightly better quality experience because a guy has to put in so much more effort, has to like be so much more vulnerable when he approaches a woman in person or a woman that he actually knows, not someone that is just like... I mean, dating has always been... I agree with that to an extent. Take some balls to go and approach women in person. But guys who are going up and doing that all the time, they're just treating it like a dating app. They're desensitized to it. So there isn't really anything for them to lose. A game, but with the rise of dating apps, it has become even more of a game. For men who lack empathy, women have become more easily objectified and exploited with the aid of dating apps. And you objectify I yourselves. You should see the photos and shit they put on there. What about every, every date you go on where the women say, and I'll make a video about this, no one night stands, no FWB, um, uh, whatever it is, they're trying to you know put, put a boundary you're half an hour in and they're deep-throating you in the back seat of the VN. 
Oh, I don't normally bring guys back to my house and your dog, the dog's there, right? The little dog's there as you're walking in the door and it's just looking at you like, yeah, sure, he's done this four times this week. Oh, but no accountability. Women are exploited. Women are exploited because they have no agency. They have no accountability for what they're doing in this world. It's men. Men are abusing them. Men are exploiting their vulnerability as women who just want love. Women don't like sex at all. It's just the men promising love and taking the sex off these women. Come on, give me a break. I have waxed poetic about dating apps in a past class, but it's absolutely disgusting how women have become the products for sale on these <laughs> apps, even the ones that claim to be so pro-women. So she also got into how women's belief that men gatekeep commitment is basically creating this situation where women are auditioning for commitment for relationships from men. Uh, no, Steve and Bryce. Um, most guys would be very much happy to commit to a woman and enter into a relationship pretty quickly if you seem normal um, and seem like she um, has some sort of long-term um, availability and long-term, what's the word, prospect of being someone solid. Most guys don't know this shit. Most guys aren't out there being monster hunters. Most guys aren't out there. They don't have a clue about women. They don't have a clue about what they're doing. They're operating blind. So any woman that gave the average guy the time of day, he's not going to be all Andrew Tate gatekeeping and all this bullshit that, you know, uh, alpha male red pill bullshit goes on with. They're not going to be doing that. They're going to be happily entering into joint relationships where they just enjoyed each other's time and they decided to go out with each other. None of this rubbish. None of this power struggle. Okay, so a lot of women believe this women gatekeep schmecks and men gatekeep Schmex. commitment scam. Schmexy. They fall for this trap of giving men access to their portal in hopes of getting commitment out of the men. Like, if you have to audition for a man, he's not the one. And especially men who participate in hookup culture and men who see women as objects to be used and conquered. How does this work? Aren't there two parties to each sort of interaction? So, so unless we're saying that men are doing this against every woman's will, uh, a lot of women love partaking in hookup culture. It's a dirty little secret. Women are just as bad as men, if not worse. They do it in the cover of night. They're like dirty little possums, dirty little cats have an action together uh, with Brycey and Chad behind the bushes down at the cricket ground. And then they've got their dickhead at home, who's a nice guy waiting for them to take them out on dates and all of that. A lot of guys don't know and understand this. Women will say, oh, all I want is a boyfriend. It's so hard just to get a boyfriend. Easiest thing in the world to get a boyfriend if you're realistic with who you want to be a boyfriend. That's why this whole extreme fanatical womanist sort of female red pill, whatever this crap is that she's on about is, it doesn't apply the same for women as it does for men. There's a reason why men... Uh, lean this way because there is a very high difficulty for the vast population of men to actually meet women, which is frustrating, right? And so they turn to this content to try and learn and better themselves. Uh, I've been cr critical of the red pill in this um, video. I, I, I'll say I like what most of the red pill has to say. You get some fanatics who just say dumb shit, but I think it, uh, it forces men um, to learn about women, improve themselves, learn female nature, and just be better overall to then attract a high quality of woman. That's what red pill is, really. It's men helping each other level up. And sure, there are bad actors in the space, but really, this, she's not helping women level up. She's uh, uh, putting out information that poisons and then makes women handicap themselves against the rules of how male and female interactions are supposed to be. So they're not getting better. They're becoming more... Um, closed off, uh, more difficult, and just not overall attractive for men to pursue. That's what this, this, this does. Okay. These are the very same men who will call women, quote unquote, impure. When women become, quote unquote, impure by being with them, it's almost like they're the impurity. Okay. <laughs> so contrast that scammy belief that men gatekeep commitment scammy. with believing that you as a woman gatekeep everything, that you as a woman gatekeep commitment as well. Okay, you gatekeep schmacks, you gatekeep commitment, you gatekeep his lineage, you gatekeep <laughs> everything. Okay, uh, he should be absolutely grateful that you're even talking to him. Uh, and if he doesn't recognize that, he's not the one. 
When he's you... not the one. Well, unless he's a soy boy beta cuck, um, he's probably going to put up with that. Uh, most guys are not going to be the one for you. Because it's just outrageous. This just goes against just how the intergender dynamics are actually supposed to work. Love it. You believe that men gatekeep commitment. You put yourself in auditioning energy. And that's the worst energy to be in as a woman. Like, how dare you? Okay, how dare you audition for a man? <laughs> how dare you ask a man to pick you? Pick me. Choose me. Love oh, this me. is bitter. How dare you disrespect yourself like that? Okay. Oh, like, this chick's been hurt bad because it's different from men who get bitter because they do get crushed. They get, they get the life snuffed out of them, the belief in women through divorce courts and oh, just losing their life over women. These women get upset and crushed because Chad doesn't commit. Oh, and look how bitter, how cynical she's become, spreading that being a pick-me, being a woman that actually markets herself well to a man. So he's actually attracted to her is a negative thing. <laughs> uh. Get up, okay? You are the literal prize. You literally are the gateway to the portal. Oh, no, like, you're means... not just the gatekeeper. You're the literal gate. Okay, so can we not can we not believe for table. one second that the people having their so-called loneliness crisis are the ones gatekeeping anything? Okay, men gatekeep commitment, yet no one wants to commit to them. It's like being a bouncer to a club that nobody wants to go into. Like, <laughs> anyway, I understand that women feel this pressure to audition for certain men, to be a pick-me for certain men, feel like certain men do gatekeep commitment. I understand that because... It seems like good men are in What is a good man? Please, I want a definition of good man, please, in legal writing from you, what it actually means. I want a statute from you as to what it means. What's a good man? I'll tell you what a good man is when these kinds of women say it. A good man is a man who does whatever they want and makes life easy for them and goes along with their absurd rules. It's women like this that believe in manifestation and... Um, creating things out of thin air based on the will of their brains. Things will come to them. The good man will come and knock on the door. They say he's tight. They buy into this bullshit. Women are the prize. Women are the table. Everyone's a prize, really. If you think about it, let's strip all this bullshit back that everyone carries on about before any of you being women or men were introduced to this sort of toxic, a lot of toxic bullshit on both sides on the internet. All you wanted, and you're open-minded and opened up to both being nice people to each other but now there's this inter intergender wars going on where women say stupid ridiculous bullshit like this person here um taking down thousands and tens of thousands of women with her, hundreds of thousands 230,000 subscribers who will probably watch her daily um and you also got a lot of men out there scaring guys off um ever talking to women for life i think there's a lot more at risk for a man there's a lot less at risk for women so I can understand to an extent why men get put off women for life because a lot of bad things happen and I've talked about them in, through my experiences too, guys. So I'm not saying, oh, go and commit to all these women and bend over backwards and be a soy boy beta cuck. I'm not saying that. I'm, what I'm trying to say is I can understand why guys go down the rabbit hole. You're mad. You're angry. You don't understand what's happened. You, you thought the world was one way and it's not this way. You've had your life rug pulled from underneath you. This is what men go through to go and get to this point. And not even as fanatical as this. Has she been married and, uh, and had a life with somebody and put all her money, resources, time, effort, love, sacrifice, her freedom, everything into that man and then for him to rug pull her and take all her shit? Pretty sure not. I mean, some guys have just upset her on dating apps or whatever. I don't know her story. I'm making assumptions here. But it's a young girl. I can't see her being overly experienced with serious commitments in her life. It's just either jumping on the bandwagon, um, selling false hope, selling bullshit, because I think she does courses and bullshit as well. She's got a support girly group that she calls. I think she charges women to be in it. So it's almost like a female Andrew Tate almost, you know, with these stupid hustlers university that guys buy or other channels that have um, uh, courses and shit like that. So critical thinking, guys, when you're watching this content as well, I'm trying to say you can apply this to the males that you're, that you're watching the space. A lot of them, um, you're the product to them, right? They're trying to sell you things. They're playing off your insecurities and your anger as well. Um, and yeah, 
That's why I sort of crave this channel. I don't like it. I like to be a bit more balanced. They want to feed hate. They want to feed anger. I don't think it's healthy. But while I, and I'm going to say, guys, I know I can be very based on I am. I'm not changing my views on anything. But I think after watching stuff like this, it's good to also self-reflect and think, hang on, am I that extremist? But for men, I don't think that I am. Uh, I like to be very reasonable. But this woman here, um, I'm not going to watch a whole video. I'm watching 10 minutes here, and I'm not watching any more bullshit. And she's talking absolute rubbish. Um, and yeah, she's causing me a, quite a bit of frustration trying to hold in um, unloading a massive spray on her. Uh, so look, without further ado, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this a bit of a different one, a bit more analytical, a bit more thought-provoking. Um, I want to just try and unpick, unpeel, have a, try and understand how people and women actually get to this point. Try and juxtapose it with how men get to a certain point in their lives too. What causes both the sexes to go this way? All right, guys, if you enjoyed this, let me know if you like this kind of content. Um, if you don't want me to feature her anymore, um, and analyze and critique um, her channel, let me know as well. And once again, if you haven't subbed, please do. It really helps me out. And I'll see you in the next video. Once again, if you've made it this far, I greatly appreciate the half an hour of your day you've given me. Thank you.